happy little games. If you were a boy growing up in the 1980s, more than likely you had two interests. The first one being the action-packed, over-the-top violence of such movies as Terminator, Die Hard, and Lethal Weapon. Your second interest was probably video games, so it was only a matter of time before developers started merging the two together to give us that Hollywood spectacle right in the palm of our hands. There was nothing better than pretending you were Arnold or Sly, decimating everything that moved as you advanced your way through the levels. Some of these games really were challenging, especially with the amount of enemies and roadblocks thrown at you. Like a wise ex-girlfriend once said, the faster you blow, the faster you go, and today's game is no different. There are tanks, helicopters, and enemies, oh my, that you have to blast your way through to make it to the end. Today... We are going back to 1990 to check out the follow-up to Capcom's 1985 smash success, Commando, which goes by the name of Mercs. This run-and-gun classic is a three-player simultaneous affair that not only challenged your video game skills, but it was also pretty fun to play. So reload your weapons and get ready to shoot everything that moves, this is the history of Mercs. Before continuing on with the history of Mercs, we've got to go back to 1985 and discuss the game that started this series, which was Commando. This was an overhead run-and-gun shooter released by Capcom that, coincidentally enough, shared the same name with the Arnold Schwarzenegger blockbuster that came out later that year, which also featured a lone commando decimating everything in his path. Obviously, there was a bit of brand confusion when kids saw this in the arcades. The game was known as Sinhao Now Okami, or Wolf of the Battlefield in Japan, so the confusion was only felt in this part of the world. Regardless of the name, the game was a massive success and was converted to just about every system under the sun. In 1990, Capcom wanted to resurrect some of their older IPs and also put a little paper money in their pocket. In the five years since the game was released, a number of hardware improvements had been made so the new game was going to run on the shiny, sexy CPS-1 hardware. Commando was strictly a solo player affair, so one of the things the developers insisted on adding was co-op play, but not just two player support, but also three. Since there are three players simultaneously, you do get your pick of three different characters, each with a different backstory, but they all play identically. The game took everything great about Commando and injected it with a healthy dose of Hulk Hogan vitamins, making it bigger, badder, and better. Mercs blasted its way into the arcades in 1990. It was released as Sinhao no Okami 2 in Japan, so it was pretty obvious it was a follow-up to the original game. Here in the States, though, most players didn't even realize it was a direct follow-up to Commando. However, as the story goes, the President of the United States has been kidnapped by revolutionaries from the country of Zatula, and due to diplomatic relations, they cannot officially send anyone to rescue him. They contact the Mercs who agree to do whatever it takes to rescue the President and complete their mission. This is a three-player simultaneous run-and-gun game which features the triumphant return of Super Joe from the original Commando, along with his brothers-in-arms, Howard Powell and Thomas Clark, who all play identically. Aside from the three-player co-op, another big change is the addition of a life bar, which does away with the one-hit kills found in the original game. 
You would think having a life bar would make the game quite a bit easier over Commando, but it makes up for the inclusion of the bar with the addition of an insane amount of enemies. Almost immediately, they are on you like stink on a turd. Also, be advised you only get one life per credit. Thankfully though, you do get some pretty good firepower to get you started. Instead of having a narrow path moving up the screen as seen in the original, the screen will now scroll left and right which allows for wider levels of play. The controls are pretty straightforward with you having a button for firing your primary weapon and another button for blasting off those deadly decimating bombs. You start with a standard machine gun which works good but there are additional power ups to be picked up along the way. Hidden inside the various crates you will find a grenade launcher, shotgun, and a flamethrower that all have unlimited ammo. The standard Capcom POW icons make the return and picking these up will increase the power of your weapon. There are other ones that can be picked up including hamburgers and spinach which will give you a little pep in your step to help you in your fight. Instead of standard grenades, you have the Mega Crush which will destroy everything on the screen and put a serious dent into any bosses you are fighting. One of the coolest features though is the addition of vehicles for you to commandeer. There is a tank which is absolutely massive and does insane amounts of damage but it's difficult to steer. A jeep which is fast and has a rapid fire machine gun and a speedboat that is also equipped with machine guns. Each vehicle does have its own life bar so you have to deal as much damage as you can as quick as you can. Something else worth mentioning are the destructible backgrounds that sometimes need to be blasted to get through such as trees, shacks, and other objects that block your path. There are six long levels in the game with bosses at the end of each one. The levels you encounter are the drop off point, the village, enemy carrier. The Jungle The Village Part 2 And the Enemy Fortress The bosses that you have to contend with are the attack jet, a tank, attack helicopter, gunboat. Railgun Missile Launcher And the final boss of the game, the Hercules Transport This one is a bit tricky because you have to destroy it before it takes off so there is a bit of a time limit. If you're able to do so, you rescue the president and save the day, although your tale has to remain officially untold.
The game is a lot of fun to play. It is total carnage indeed, especially if you are playing it in three player mode. The huge sprites, fantastic music, and excellent controls makes it a great gaming experience. It was included in Capcom Generations Volume 4 Blazing Guns, which was a compilation that included Gunsmoke and Commando for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn in 1998. In 2005, it was also released as part of Capcom's Classic Collection Volume 1 for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, and later on the PSP in 2006. The Genesis version was also released on the Wii Virtual Console. In 2008, Wolf of the Battlefield Commando 3 was released. This is a three-player online shoot-em-up extravaganza which features old-school gameplay along with updated HD 3D visuals. The controls have also been updated which includes twin-stick shooting similar to Smash TV which works really well. The action is absolutely insane with giant bosses and bullets flying everywhere. Cutscenes are used to flesh out the story with an anime style that sort of works. Various weapons are also littered throughout the levels and the POW icon makes its return. There are only five levels in the game, but each one is very long in length. Similar to the previous game of Mercs, there are bosses at the end of each one. The game was available on Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network and cost a mere $10, but it was well worth it especially if you had a couple of buddies to join you. The game was converted to a number of systems, although not as many as Commando. The home computer ports and the Master System version were brought to us by Tiertex, and, surprise surprise, they're not too bad. The first one we are looking at is the Spectrum version. This little machine tries its hardest, but the color clash and the general use of color doesn't really work. For example, your character looks like he just got done auditioning for the Blue Man Group and decided to drop into the jungle for a little R&R. The jungle backgrounds are strictly red which makes for an odd choice to say the least. The little things are here such as the destructible environments and huge bosses though and the game is fast although it is a bit choppy. The sound effects are pure spectrum gold and reminds me of the time I heard a mouse with a queefing problem. Thankfully, if you have any friends and want to torture them just a bit, there is a two player option. The Amstrad version looks nice with plenty of sprites on screen and colorful detailed graphics. Another upgrade over the Spectrum version is the music which sounds pretty good. With the added bonus of music and colorful detailed sprites comes horrible frame rates and sluggish controls. The enemies are just relentless and gang up on you almost immediately. If the frame rate was better the game could have been a contender. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next and it is the best of the 8-bit computer ports, but that's not really saying much. For starters, there is only one tune that plays throughout the entire game so repetition does set in rather quickly. While the graphics are fairly detailed, the color palette is drab and the animation is a little choppy. 
The difficulty is through the roof for some reason, making it harder than the actual arcade game. At least there is a two player option. The version most people are familiar with is probably the Sega Genesis version which was converted by Sega themselves. This was very good although it wasn't a straight up port of the arcade game as it did add extra things to expand upon the gameplay. It includes an original mode which sees a number of items added such as boots that increase your speed, bulletproof vests, gas masks and other power ups. In addition to the typical spinach and hamburger health increases, you also get roast chicken and legs of lamb. Thankfully, your character is not a vegetarian. One glaring omission though is that it's only a single player game. Overall though, it controls great and feels like the arcade original. Airtex gets a lot of flack on this channel and for the most part it's justified. But when they do put out something good, I'm always the first to acknowledge it. That brings us to the Amiga version which isn't too bad. The entire arcade presentation has been included which always gets a big plus in my book. Most of the arcade game made it over with bullets and bombs ablazing, but the problem lies with the controls. They are a little sluggish, but it doesn't detract a whole lot from the gameplay. The two player mode has also been included so you can blast it out with a friend if you choose to do so. The Atari ST version looks very similar to the Amiga in still shots, but once it starts to move, the frame rate drops faster than I do smelling my wife's SBDs. The frame rate is a herky, jerky mess making it completely unplayable in my opinion. As to be expected, the music has taken a hit when compared to the Amiga version as well. Not the worst one on the list, but definitely not the best one either. And the last one on the list is the Sega Master System version. The first thing you notice is that the sprites are a bit smaller than the arcade game, but that's to be expected. The controls are fairly decent, but there is a problem with the collision detection. It's not bad, but it could have been much better in my opinion. And that, my friends, is the history of Mercs. I have always enjoyed this arcade game even before I knew it was a sequel to Commando. The arcade game has tons of total carnage and it's a lot of fun to blast everything that moves. No matter if you're riding in the speedboat, piloting a tank, or just using your trusty but perhaps rusty machine gun, it sure is a lot of fun laying the smack down on all the enemies. If you've never had a chance to try this game out, be sure to do so. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above.
Thanks, everybody, for watching.